Hello and welcome back, my crumb bums wearing stylish yet attractive ties. It's SJB here, and we've got some more chimps for you guys. We're playing on balance again because I believe this is honestly the only map that this even might be possible on. Cannons only. This is a difficult one. And I, I gotta be straight with you guys, it might be trouble right from the get-go. There might even be some weird targeting that we have to do. Um to get going up in here, but I believe the best play for us is probably to go for a cannon with frag bombs right from the get-go, hopefully save enough money to get an Etienne flowing up in here, and then get things going. But to make all that happen, it's gonna take some skills. Oh my god, this is so scary already. Uh, we have a faster reload cannon right now. I've got him on strong, which seems to be the best way to play him so far. But getting frag bombs is gonna take us to beating round nine. And I don't think that's going to be possible. Uh, well, oh yeah, look at that. Well, let's see if we can get lucky here. Okay, so this was not the plan, but I can get bigger bombs, and that might actually be a pretty good answer for us. I was not expecting to use this combination, but it does seem to be going pretty well. The only thing to note about this cannon in particular is that he will not be able to pop black balloons ever. The bottom path is the black balloon popper, and having him in the very middle definitely does hamper our situation a little bit, but... I think at this point, instead of putting him on uh, strong, I can put him on close, and I can still upgrade him to other things like heavy bombs, missile launcher, randomness, even a big, big bombs, or whatever the heck the third path is. Um, all these are definitely reasonable things to get at this point. But still, at this point, I would love to get an ATN flown in here because I think that would change the game in our favor quite a bit. So let's try and save up for that guy pretty quick. Hopefully pretty quick, because these rounds are only going to get more and more difficult here for us to survive. The faster the balloon, the worse off this cannon's going to be. Um, and I really don't want to get stuck just buying heavy bombs and then buying the missile launcher and then buying something else and never getting Etienne. Because believe it or not, Etienne is actually pretty important here to get reasonably early. Otherwise, uh, you will not get enough um, experience to get cam protection for level 24. And then you just automatically lose. So I believe that we've made it in time. We only spent about uh, a little over $1,000 here total. So things are going reasonably good. Now the good news is, is I feel much more comfortable against the quicker balloons. Because this guy will hopefully just attack the first top layer. And then we got some good cleanup in here. Um, I also do know that I'm probably going to need some extra black popping power here. So instead of just going full on high levels uh, for this cannon. Oh crap, look at this. What? Gotta watch every single round, bro. This is like really annoying. One single red balloon. So we did try a couple different targetings there. I tried close and I tried strong. Um, weirdly enough, Strong is not doing very well at all right now. Uh, I don't like it at all. What the heck? I'm not sure I understand why that was so much worse, but it just was. Missile Launcher Cannon not doing very well. It seems like it's missing way more now that it's a Missile Launcher, and it's not attacking close at all. Is it just automatic? What the heck is going on here? I don't like that. Not at all. All right. Well, we're back to strong. No missile launcher, but I spent $11 in Etienne to get him up to level three, and I might get the drone swarm in time to just kind of keep myself alive through round 15, which seems to be a major hurdle to leap over here. Uh, and yes, we do beat round 15. I believe that these future rounds won't be too bad, but I'm, I'm a little scared to buy like any upgrades for this guy, because if this is a broken missile launcher forever, specifically when I went up to third tier, fourth tier, and fifth tier, pretty upset about that um but i do officially have heavy bombs i do need to make sure that i have some black pop pirate in here so instead of going all the way up to a really big bombs we're gonna start building a another random cannon in here and uh hope this guy's gonna be the answer to most of our issues coming up uh, pretty soon the good news about cannons is that the more that you get the less problematic things are entirely because ooh, here we go we already got to get black pop and power at tn's gonna be some of it and then Frag bombs, good enough for us for now. Not too shabby. I'm thinking about going for a bigger bombs on this guy as well, but I'm really curious to see how much this missing aspect is gonna come into play. Cause missing just a few times can lead to death by the end of the game. Luckily rounds, you know, 95, 98, 99, all that stuff. It'll be very difficult to like miss balloons when there's gigantic chunks of BFBs and ceramics and everything just completely engulfing your area. Uh, but it's a little scary to, uh, to not be sure. And look, luckily for us, Etienne did reach level 5 in time. Wasn't really even a question at this point, but, um, middle level 5. I mean, that's really like 2 or 3 rounds, man. Um, it, it's still reasonably scary. I'm gonna go Cluster Bombs. And we are thinking 5th tiers, so we want to think what's the best 5th tier matchup. And for us, a Balloon Crush with Missile Launcher makes a lot of sense. Um, so, hopefully, at least. Uh, the Bomb Blitz could go either way, really. 
heavy bombs or missile launcher. I'm a bigger fan of the heavy bombs personally. Um, mm, yeah, if I'm going up to fifth tier, I'm definitely a bigger fan of the uh, the bigger bombs. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get bigger bombs and heavy bombs on this puppy and hope that this just makes sense for us. And now things are actually going a little bit smooth here. So I'll meet you guys back for the first Moab because I think that's going to be the next major issue for us. I think we got things rolling now. Um, we're going to plan on getting some sort of recursive cluster and then probably starting to get our top path fourth tier up already while also mixing in at least one Moab Mauler somewhere. Because I do need that tiny bit of Moab popping power. I don't think Etienne's going to be enough to be uh, to be all of it for us. Okay, I'm not sure if this is going to be my fifth tier uh, or just right now be a third tier forever, but uh, maybe even a fourth tier forever, but... Um, we're gonna go for our Moab Mauler on this side because the Moab's gonna come out over here And we are gonna go for that extra range I think it could actually matter for us in the long run to get those frag bombs and all that other stuff Specifically because it's good against single Moabs too um, We're gonna put them on strong instead of anything else I do want to hit all the Moab layer in particular and then we're gonna hope that we can get a blue impact with the missile launcher pretty soon But I'm gonna I'm gonna wait on the missile launcher until I I decide if it's going to make sense for me um, I'm again a little bit afraid of this stuff. Oh look at this demolition and disastrous for uh, camo balloons as well. Disastrous for camos. Amazing for us. UAV, all monkeys gain camo balloon detection, so all of these cannons' weaknesses are no, mo no more. This guy in particular can pop black balloons and camo balloons, and now camo black balloons, and or camo lead balloons, and or DDTs if he wants to. Like, everything is allowed for us. This guy cannot pop DDTs, though, but I think he can stun them. You might be able to stun them even though we can't damage them. We're going to have to see how things go with that. But either which way, we're going to blue impact. We're going to go for our... We're going to go for our missile launcher. This could be a... Oh, I really hope that this isn't a problem because... I don't know what else I would do. I'd have to build another cannon over here to be my fifth tier. I don't know. It would just be so goofy if I had to restart with this because this was basically the only way we could get started in this game. was with this specific cross path combo. Which is kind of weird. Anyways, I'm going to finally buy this missile launcher on round 43. Let's see how it goes. Uh, seemingly not missing much. Makes me pretty happy. Okay, I'm very happy with that. It's kind of a weird looking cannon though. It's very, very chongy. Very chungus. Very wide. Wide hips. Wide birthing hips. Birthing hips for our cannons to shoot out. Well, our cannon balls to shoot out, I guess. And I guess it's about that time to start building up uh, some other crap. So, I, or... We can start saving up for our fifth tiers. So this is where it gets a little funky because $37,800 $37, is probably our best bet to save up for. But truthfully, probably going to need a balloon crush to win this game, which is $60,000. And I believe that if we can get all three fifth tier uh, cannons, we're probably going to be totally fine here. But getting them all in the right order and being able to afford all of them by the time that we actually need them can be pretty tricky for us. So I don't know if that's actually going to play out the way that I... I'm hoping here, guys. Um, boop. All right. All right. Uh, I'll be back in a few minutes when I make some decisions because I still am a little lost in my brain right now. Okay, it's crazy how comfortable I feel right now with the amount of popping power that I have and the amount of money that I saved that I have saved up. These cannons are just a good combo. Of course, mobs are going to start to be a bigger issue as time goes on, but even then, regular mobs should not be a big deal for us. Check this out. Just a few shots. Once we get down to balloons, though, boop, dead. Stunned, dead. It's that easy. So, I think what I want to do is I want to build at least one more Moab Mauler. I want one on each side. And then I might just save up, try to save up for a balloon crush. Even though that's kind of weird and absurd. Um, and basically, we're to play it by ear and see how things go. If I do need to exit out and restart or should I start to fail, like, real hard, um, I'll have to build something else. Probably going to end up being a bomb blitz but it is what it is, man. Bomb Blitz is kind of a weird one because realistically, they are much, much better against um, uh, non-chimps games where you can lose lives on accident because once you lose a life, the Bomb Storm ability goes off. It's weird that a bottom path cannon or a bottom path tower in general has an ability to use, but it's only when lives are lost, which is really weird as far as anything balloons related goes. Like nobody wants to lose a life. It's a good safety net for all of us. Except when we're on chimps mode. But he also gets extra popping power as well. So it's not that bad to get that guy anyways. Um, especially if you don't have the room to spam like eight of these guys instead. <laughs> so I think if you wanted to go for eight heavy bombs or crystal clusters, you'd probably be much, much better off than going for one bomb blitz. But, you know, that is what it is. We're in a space limited situation right now. So we got this gun first for some reason. Make sure they're both on strong. 
Um, regular mob still going down very easily. We're gonna have to test it out against the PFP to see how good our current team is. Because we need another 30 grand to get that Bloom Crush. I mean, that's not until be like, not gonna be until like round 80 or so. I don't know, man. It's a little scary for me. Uh, but I want to see round 60 in particular, see how good we're going to do. And then 63 in particular, see how good we're going to do. Those will be good testing rounds for us to see how well future rounds will go. Um, and I know there's a lot of talk about how things are going to go. And it's because, honestly, this is something I've never done before. So it's something that you have to try to plan ahead for. But also know that things might not go the way you planned them out. So you might have to adapt or change. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not like you failed because you've had to adapt your, your idea. Um, it just means that you are playing correctly. You're not just one-minded. Game, set, match. If this doesn't go the way that I want it to, you're, you're, you're over, man. It's wrong. It's wrong. We adapt, we change, we evolve over time, and we'll become better because of it. All right? So I guess we got a little bit of time to tell you guys about uh, this quick stupid dog that I own. Um, I, I'm sure uh, I, if you guys follow my channel at all, you probably know that I have two dogs. I've got Luna. She's a seven-year-old golden retriever. And I've got Lily, a approximately 10-month-old golden retriever. So she's, uh, uh, Luda is the most adorable, cute little puppy ever. She's a little grumpy about getting picked up um, and taken off the bed. That's about all. Other than that, she's like the most fantastic puppy in the entire history of the world. Let's test this out, because this is a lot of balloons. There we go. Oh, beautiful. It's exactly what I expected, but I just wanted to take it slow just in case. I mean, only two cannons, really, is doing all of this work. These guys, they're not doing much, man. I mean, like, as far as total pop and bar goes, it's Chumbawamba change. In fact, this guy's actually Chumbawamba change, too. This guy is the mega, uh, super mega wubba change. I don't know, bro. Anyways, um, uh, I've got two dogs, and one of them is super sweet, one of them is really stupid. But, uh, lately what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to do a little bit of, like, extra exercise for myself. It's just so happens that I pick when it gets really, really cold outside to do this. And I've been trying to take my dogs on extra long walks. So, we found... You know what? I'm gonna do this really quickly. I don't think we're gonna lose any lives, but I'd rather play it safe. If we have the ability to just change things in our favor, why not, man? Looks like it goes pretty well. And we're now only $20,000 away from Blue Crush. That's a big step, man. But anyways, I've been taking them on pretty long walks, and we found this really cool little, like, pathway. Uh, I, wanna, I don't even want to call it a pathway, necessarily. Randomly, like... We, okay, how do I explain this? There's a walking path near my house with, like, official bike trail, asphalt-type um, situation going on, and it's, like, really, really nice for me to, like, go walk through there. So there's, like, some weird little wildflower patches kind of next to us and everything. Um, it's nice during summer in particular. There's a lot of bugs and animals all over the place and everything. Here we go. We're going to go for this guy again. Definitely get a little scarier here than uh, previous things, but not too bad, baby. Um, but for whatever reason, I don't know why, but the park district... Park District randomly came out of nowhere and decided to just bulldoze this entire area, like, into smithereens. Like, this giant wildflower area, they're just like, nope, you're not allowed to have that anymore. And they kind of, like, drove a, a tractor through this weird, like, zone of nothingness, basically. I don't know how else to explain it. Like, there was nothing there besides wildflowers, and they decided to randomly put a tractor thing through it. Well, I decided randomly, because Lily decided to pull me towards this area, I was like, you know what? Why not? Let's check and see where it leads. Now, I kind of already knew where it led. There's nothing too ridiculous or anything like that, but uh, it was kind of just in the middle of between a river and a lake, if that makes any sense. That's like that's how skinny this path is. Like, maybe 30 feet wide at... Uh, maybe like 20 feet wide at its narrowest, but also like 100 feet wide at its thickest. It's kind of like a weird little pathway in between these two things. No matter what, you're going to go in water on one side and water on the other. And I decided to take them through here, and there was this weird little pit... Uh, there was two of them, in fact, that specifically they must have dug. I don't know why they dug this thing. I don't know if it's going to be some sort of way to keep the land from eroding, to, like, linking up the river and the, the lake or something like that. I don't know. It truly doesn't make any sense to me. But it's this pit that's actually lower than the lake right next to it. Um, it's a good eight foot deep, man. It's deep. No, maybe not eight feet. I'm going to call it six feet. I'm going to call it a good six foot deep. Six feet deep? Six foot? My friend, uh, again, interrupting my story here, but I have to tell you guys. My friend has told me uh, that I'm not allowed to say anything is feet long. It is six foot. Everything is foot. 12 foot. 18 foot. I'm not allowed to say 18 feet. 
All right, especially in his uh, building lingo, I guess, and he makes fun of me for it, so it is what it is. But uh, I still end up saying feet a lot when I probably should say foot. And it, it's a good mix. You know, I say good foot here and feet there. Sometimes it just makes sense in the way that you're saying things. But anyways, I, I interrupt and I uninterject myself by saying that there was this weird, maybe six foot deep, um, like mud area. A little hole thing. And they kind of blocked it off a little bit, but like not very good. Um, but specifically, nobody's even supposed to come over here. So it like kind of makes sense that they didn't really go too hard on not getting this thing uh, all cleaned up or whatnot. But there was two of them too. Randomly on like kind of kitty corner areas in between this little thing thingamajig. All right, we're getting to some weird areas right now. Uh, Moab's still kind of going down, but we're getting that money, man. I mean, I have to go for it. Bloom Crush, we are so close. I'm gonna like make it happen. Whatever, if I have to build like a Moab Mauler, everything around until it happens. I'm doing it. Maybe even a Moab Assassin. Seems kind of funky, but it could actually work for us. All right, another ability here. Problem is, probably not going to be able to afford this till, till after 76 or so. It's just one of those things, man. You just don't make a lot of money on these 70s. 60s and 70s do not make good money for you at all. Not enough balloons. Not enough balloons. So uh, we've been taking this uh, little walking path now for a couple days, and the reason why it's really nice is because I get to take them and just let them off the leash, and there's nowhere for them to go. They can either fall in the river and get swept away, they can fall in the lake and have to climb back out, or they could just stay on the walking path and or the the like random weed path that there there is, just short weeds basically, um, mowed over by a a tractor of some sort. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, but there's nowhere for them to really go, so I like let them off the leashes, and we kind of just run through this little area. They run through it, and I just kind of walk through this area, and it's been really, really fun. I gotta be straight with you guys, letting the dogs off the leash, and just want it, watching them like a gallivantally hop through this this weird looking wooded area, weird looking weeded area. Uh, they love it. All right, they really do, and I live vicariously through my dogs' lives. You know, I don't have fun anymore as a human. All right, I, I, I have fun as a dog person. It sounds terrible, but sometimes it's just the truth hurts, man. And it's, it is it is true. So, uh, regardless, I was I just let them run around. And for the past, like, three days, everything's been really, really cool. And Lily has gone by the pit, but I yell at her, and she just goes away from the pit. No big deal. No big deal. Oh my god, of course they picked the hardest route in the freaking game here for me to have to deal with this. Alright, hold on, hold on. Hold your horses. We're gonna see if we have to build some mob maulers here, because I believe that we might have to build some mob maulers. Um, this is a lot of BFBs that we're gonna have to deal with here, and my ability's already worn off. I think this guy's gonna help a little bit, but not a lot bit. Um, I'm getting close to the amount of money that I need here, but I'm not gonna be able to afford it. Uh, I'll probably afford it on this round, but probably not in time. Maybe in time. Oh my god, this is so scary. Alright, we're down to the last few BFBs. They have to be getting further here. And Balloon Crush is up! Balloon Crush is up, baby! Now that is good for us. That's good for business. We got the Balloon Crush. Yeah, baby! Alright, so the next thing we want to do is probably go for a mob assassin instead of this bomb blitz. But we'll see how things go again. Um... Basically, if we need more balloon popping power, bomb blitz. If we need more mob popping power, mob assassin. Our mob eliminator. But uh, I think my best bet is to probably put him... Huh. I think my best bet is probably to put him here. It'll be closer to when the bad balloon comes out, and that's going to be the time that I need him the most. Um, and I could st still put mob maulers over here and everything, but I think this is probably going to be my best guy. So we're going to go for mob assassin, and we'll need $27,000, which should actually happen pretty quickly in free play. Probably three, four, five rounds, something like that. We'll have enough money for this guy, and uh, life will change all for the better. So anyways, uh, for the past three days, the pit has been fine. She kind of like goes by, it and I yell at her really quickly, and she kind of just come, wanders on back, and life has been good. But my stupid dog being very, you know, it's a lot, a lot of adjectives I could use for her, but uh, she's so smart that she's stupid and or very curious about everything. All right. I guess maybe not stupid in the normal sense, just stupid in the way that you're going to get in a lot of trouble because you're curious, right? Uh, and she decided that she wanted to randomly go near this pit. And, of course, she fell in the pit. Okay, now when I say it's six foot deep, I'm not talking about straight freaking down, man. She just, boom, broke her leg or something like that. She was sitting at the bottom um, like like uh, the Golden Retriever from Homeward Bound the end of Homeward Bound, and everybody was just crying, sitting there, waiting for the Gold Retriever to try to crawl up this hole. And if you haven't seen Homeward Bound, by the way, 
it is an absolute necessity to watch. I don't care how old it is. I don't care how old you are. If you haven't watched Homeward Bound yet, you got some issues in your life, all right? I'd go out, buy the DVD, go rent it on thing. I don't care if you got to torrent it, man. Do whatever you got to do to make sure you're going to watch Homeward Bound at some point in your life, okay? It was not quite as bad as that. Let me be straight with you guys. It was not quite as bad as that. But it was still pretty bad because I had to, she couldn't get out of the pit. She, like, was trying to crawl out, crawl out of it. It's, it wasn't, like, super muddy, but it rained pretty bad the past two days. It was, like, this sort of thick dirt-like mud kind of combo is the best way I can explain it. Not fully mud, not fully dirt. So I had to jump down in this freaking hole and, uh, and she's just kind of sitting there all super happy. Like, super happy that she's stuck in this hole, man. Of course. She could, she could find fun in the, the stupidest things. But she's having a, fun, a grand old time sitting in this hole. I gotta jump in this hole and I gotta go uh, uh, I basically lift her out of this hole. I, I, don't, I can't say full on um, what was it, like drag her out of the hole, but no, no, no. I, I actually did. I was pretty nice. I just lift her out of the hole. And uh, she kind of just got up and was ready to go and ran off again. So I'm going to have to start watching my dogs a little bit closer. And specifically getting really mad about going near the holes. Because I don't want her to get hurt in the future. Um, but yeah, she kind of just like slid down. Almost like face first down this hole. Just it was, it was like the most funny and scary thing at the exact same time. Like I'm, I hope you don't get hurt. But at the same time, you were just so ridiculous and absurd. That I can't not find this funny. Um... But anyways, everything turned out good in the end. I got a little muddy. Lily got a little muddy, but she was probably clean by the time we got home because she rolled around in grass and everything, being a jerk face that she is. All right, things are going very well right now. Uh, cannons are exploding literally everything. Literally everything. I don't have that much excitement in my life anymore, man. I mean, if I see a hummingbird, that's a fancy day. But uh, for, for me to have to deal with jumping in this, uh, it's probably not even six feet, man. I'm probably over-exaggerating. I'm an over-exaggerator just like my mom. You know, I don't talk about my family all that much, but uh, my mom in particular is the most gigantic exaggerator of all time. If there was two meerkats somewhere randomly at the zoo, there's 12 meerkats. You know, it's just like, it doesn't matter how much. If something's worth $1,000, it's worth 150 grand, man. I don't know. She's just an exaggerator. Maybe that's where I get it from. Okay, so 83 is going very, fairly well at this point. We're already almost at our mobile limited money. Um, I would really, like, love to have some sort of village on this map, though. I don't even know if we could fit it. Can you put a village over here? I'm pretty sure you can. Uh, yeah, you can. Of course, of course, we can't do that. Not for our challenge today. And we get the Moab Eliminator! That's good news for us. Alright, that's gonna help us out a lot. Against pretty much everything. And it also has that automatic black popping power, which is gonna be extra helpful for us. So, I'm, I'm pretty pumped. Some people think that the ability is really the main reason for a Moab Eliminator, but that is actually not true. Moab Eliminators have a very good amount of Moab popping power, just kind of standard at this regular shot over here. So do not underestimate that that aspect of the Moab Eliminator. It's not just about the ability, it's about everything else you're getting in combination. Now, I probably need some more Moab Mulders pretty soon, but again, I think our best bet is the three fifth tiers. Combine them together, and usually you have a good time. Now, almost any three fifth tier monkeys will get you pretty far in life, because usually they try to have three different types of towers. They don't want to just have the exact same thing two different times over, right? So it makes a lot of sense that they sort of mix them up in fun and interesting ways, but also ways that make sense to just combine them together to make a really good team. Uh, the best example I can give of that is just a tax order if you kind of just look at it. I mean, you've got a fire tower a blade tower and a tack tower. Tack tower shoots out bajillions of tacks. This guy has ability that just kind of massively spams everywhere. This guy's a really cool balloon popping, fire blasting meteor shooter. Like they're just so different in such unique ways um, that, and they're all good, you know, but they're, they're different. They work differently. One's best against mobs, one's got, and they're like different costs too. So it all just kind of adds up and makes sense together. All right, so I'm actually feeling very, very comfy right now. We're going to come back when the, we see the first DDTs and see how things are going. you got to admit, things are going pretty well so far. Um, it seems a little scarier than it actually is, because there's usually, like, a lot of mobs and BFPs on the screen. It takes a pretty good amount of time to pop them, but we have basically infinite stunnage. So here's a good example of how things are going to go. And it looks like, yes, we do not hurt them with this guy, but we do stun them. That's all I care about. I just need to get that stunnage so everybody else can actually get to work here. And I think that'll even help us out through round... 95 and run 99 as well. Um, I think I usually don't go for this guy if I ever have to do this, though, because I was afraid of that actual aspect right there. But knowing that this is the case makes me a very happy man. 
Um, and we're just about at that. Oh, no, no, no. I thought it was 27k. I got confused for a second. 12k left for a bomb blitz. But we'll easily afford that probably around 95 or so. And then it's all about spamming. We can spam whatever we want, but a bunch of third tiers of pretty much anything, or maybe even a few fourth tiers. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, I wouldn't mind another mode of assassin against the bad balloon or whatnot. It does seem to help us out because we have so much stunning power that we have like 10 mode of assassin abilities per, per round here. It's kind of absurd how many we're using, but it is what it is. It's kind of weird that the hardest rounds of this entire run have been by far, and I, I don't say uh, this will follow through all the way through round 100, but so far, the hardest rounds have been the first three to four rounds. And round 15, <laughs> um, they have been tricky. Now this is really weird because this is not the way you want this to go down. Usually you want this guy popping balloons and in this situation he's hitting oh my gods. So that is not usually what you want to see here. I cannot see what the balloons are at all. Uh, but this is going to be a good gauge of how all the future rounds go beyond this. And it looks like all these oh my gods haven't even actually started to go inside of the circle yet. So even though it seems like there's so much going on and there's so much deadliness that could happen to us, there just isn't. It's just, it's getting popped in time. Um, it just takes some time. It just takes a little bit of time here. That's why I've been showing you guys every, like, other round instead of every round. This should help out a little bit. Get a little extra pop and power in here. We got the Bomb Blitz officially. Oh, and we've got the UK of level 20 full time, baby. Keep it going, Etienne. All right, let's look at this pop count. 72k, not bad. 200k for Etienne. 315k for this guy. 306 for this guy. 317. Wow. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, that We've got a 300 a 300 and a 300 so close together. You know, I got them at different times and all that stuff, but still, really intriguing. All right, I'm just gonna use this ability just to use it. I'm feeling pretty comfy about these guys, though. I don't feel like anything's sneaking through at all. Uh, Yep, feels pretty comfy. And now we can decide what else we wanna get. And I think, since mobs are still kind of the major issue here, we're gonna go for a, uh, we're gonna go for, mm, let's do it like this. Let's go for two cannons in the top corners here. I believe I could fit two more cannons somewhere else randomly down here or something like that. Usually you could fit towers there, but this guy might be a little too big. Um, looks like, no, he's not too big. So we're going to go for... Uh, it's a little difficult to tell what's going on there, but we go for a mob mauler kind of across the board here. Um, yeah, it's very difficult to see what the heck's going on, but it looks like our major cannon here is doing all the stunning power, doing the real work here, but more mob maulers. We're also going to get the frag bobs on those guys just because I want them. A little extra range doesn't hurt nobody. And then also having that uh, automatic black popping power is just nice. DDTs and everything, man. Definitely going to help out here. All right. Um, that looks pretty good for that. And then believe it or not, this guy, I'm a little, like, tiny, tiny, tiny bit afraid of the balloons. So I don't think that a bottom path section help us out that much more for, like, balloon popping power itself. So I think I'm better off getting an extra stunner. Just in case this guy gets overwhelmed for some reason. I don't think that's going to happen. But I'd rather be safe. So we're going to go for another one of these guys. And of course another missile launcher. And I want to wait and get that balloon impact. Let's not forget about that. Alright. Things are going very well for 97. 98 is going to be the biggest balloon level in the game. So let's see how this is going to go. We're going to go for two fairly early abilities. And probably use them multiple times. Um, it's going to be a slow going one. So why not bro? Why not? All right, so again, looks very scary in the middle of the map right here, but mostly everything is getting stunned so much, I hope, that it doesn't really matter. We're going to go for an extra balloon impact to stop them uh, balloons from sneaking through here. This is absurd to watch, though. If for some reason we are not popping the balloons, I don't I don't know what else to do. Like, we, I think we just lose. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know how else I can micro through this or something like that. All right, another big ability coming out from us, second time around already. Uh, oh no, I lied. I'm gonna take a time around. Hold on, I thought I, pr I pressed the wrong button. Wasn't ready yet, wasn't ready yet. Oh, didn't matter. Woo! All right, we're gonna just use this ability anyways. I'm gonna get another uh, Moab Assassin combo uh, here to help out against the bad. Things are still getting stunned in the middle, which is exactly what you want to see. TDTs get taken down infinitely. Beautiful, beautiful. And then round 100. So Moab Limb plus two Eliminators. And he's already, like, halfway dead. How do you top that? Cannons, bro! Cannons! F-T-W. All right. Two more assassins, and that's got to be over, man. He can't survive this. And this is also without an Etienne ability. 
So, uh, surprisingly. Balance, it's one of those maps, man, where if I'm really playing intermediate and I have to force myself to go intermediate, it really does open up, up a lot of different options for us. Uh, and I thought, honestly, if I failed on round 7 too many times in a row, I probably would not be able to go anywhere near round 100. But luckily, we got the beginning down, and that led to an easy victory all the way through. Don't forget, if you guys want to press that like button for me, that would be much, much appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And uh, the 205 cannon was the monkey star. Uh, kind of makes sense. Um, kind of makes sense, I think. 577, but everybody's close. 400k for this guy and 501 for this one. Etienne started to fall off a little bit, but still doing a pretty good amount of pops overall, man. That's uh, cool. Thanks for watching, and have a super duper delicious day.